This is what's called a lunar spacecraft. Yet after the setbacks with SLS and Lunar Gateway, the next issue threatening NASA's Artemis program is the Orion spacecraft. Unfortunately, Orion is now at the center of challenges related to the most crucial factors in any lunar mission, schedule, cost, and safety. But what if NASA is forced to prioritize just one of these? That's a question they may soon need to answer. How did NASA end up here? Should they cancel Orion and SLS in favor of SpaceX's Starship? Let's explore that today on Great SpaceX. We all know that next September, NASA is set to launch Artemis II, marking the second phase of its ambitious Artemis program. This mission will see the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft take astronauts on a journey around the moon. Unlike Artemis I, which was an uncrewed test flight, Artemis II will be a significant milestone in human space exploration, carrying astronauts to the moon for the first time since Apollo 17 in 1972, a gap of over half a century. For this mission to succeed, the vehicles used, particularly the Orion spacecraft, must perform flawlessly. Orion will serve as the crew's home for the duration of the mission, carrying them from launch to lunar orbit and then back to Earth for re-entry and splashdown. However, Orion has been plagued by several issues that NASA must address before Artemis II can safely fly. In May, NASA's Office of Inspector General, or OIG, published a report titled NASA's Readiness for the Artemis II Crewed Mission to Lunar Orbit. The report highlighted critical concerns with Orion's heat shield, separation bolts, and power distribution system, all of which could pose significant risks to the safety of the crew. These problems are particularly alarming considering that they pertain to some of the most vital systems for a safe return from space. The heat shield has emerged as one of the most concerning issues. During the re-entry of Artemis 1, NASA discovered over a hundred spots where the heat shield's ablative thermal material eroded differently than expected. This material is designed to protect the spacecraft from the intense heat generated during re-entry, but the uneven wear observed raised serious concerns about the shield's reliability. The OIG report included photographs showing the damage, giving a visual representation of the severity of the problem. NASA has stated that engineers are investigating possible solutions which may involve redesigning the heat shield or adjusting Orion's re-entry trajectory. However, they have yet to provide a clear timeline for when these fixes will be implemented. This ongoing investigation contributed to NASA's decision to delay the launch of Artemis II from its original schedule. NASA is now facing a tough choice regarding Artemis II continue with the heat shield used on Artemis 1, or design an entirely new one. Both options come with serious challenges. Sticking with the current heat shield would keep the mission on schedule but could risk the safety of the crew given the issues encountered during Artemis 1. While some suggest landing at a steeper angle to reduce this risk, it's an untested approach. On the other hand, creating a new heat shield would reduce the risk but almost certainly delay the mission. With only a year left before the planned 2025 launch, the timeline would be tight for NASA and and its contractors to develop, test, and install a new system. Despite this, NASA remains publicly optimistic, insisting that the mission is still on track for September of 2025, though this confidence may be fragile. A further delay could even lead to Artemis II flying without a crew, effectively repeating the uncrewed Artemis I mission, which would be a major setback. This dilemma highlights NASA's ongoing struggle with inefficiency and delays, a byproduct of its traditional reliance on legacy contractors. Each system from the SLS to Orion has taken years to develop at the cost of billions. Meanwhile, while private companies like SpaceX are revolutionizing the industry, delivering faster, cheaper, and more reliable solutions. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft and Falcon rockets are prime examples of how modern innovation can outpace NASA's older systems. As NASA grapples with these challenges, the widening gap between traditional aerospace methods and the efficiency of private companies becomes more apparent. It's clear that the future of space exploration may be driven by the bold strides of private companies like SpaceX rather than government agencies. Careful considerations of the issues with Orion becomes even more necessary when we look at another recent disappointment, the Starliner. Once again, Boeing, NASA's longtime partner, has been at the center of numerous delays and problems. With an investment of over 4 billion US dollars, Boeing's Starliner has faced repeated issues during development, leading to years of delays. And when it finally launched, new problems surfaced, creating anxiety within the aerospace community. Even after reaching the ISS, technical difficulties 
Ortiz persisted, causing chaos on the station. Fortunately, after over three months, Starliner returned to the morning of September 7th. But now, NASA and Boeing must work hard to address the persistent issues plaguing this spacecraft. Orion, tasked with an even more complex and demanding mission, could face similar risks. The extreme conditions it will encounter, combined with its known technical issues, raise serious concerns. And if problems arise during the mission, where will the astronauts turn for help? Who will be able to save them? These are difficult questions for NASA to grapple with as they push forward. What do you think? Should NASA scrap this spacecraft and start fresh? If you believe so, respond with cancel it in the comments section down below. Be sure to also like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's journey as they continue to make history. All in all, Orion is just one of the many problems within the current Artemis program. NASA spent over 23 billion US dollars on the systems needed to complete Artemis 1, and now they're struggling to prepare for Artemis 2. As we speak, the SLS parts are still being transported to Florida, meaning they aren't yet fully stacked. Until this step is completed, crucial tests like cryogenic trials, static fire tests, and the wet dress rehearsal cannot take place. They might even argue that they have a year left, but a year can pass in the blink of an eye if no progress is made. And if delays continue, the cost of Artemis 2 could easily surpass that of Artemis 1. Adding to the growing concern, the hardware for SLS is under increasing scrutiny. The NASA Office of Inspector General recently released a report on SLS-1B components, including the core booster and exploration upper stage, both managed by Boeing. The report revealed that these parts are not meeting NASA or international standards, raising concerns about further delays. Boeing might need additional time to fix these issues, which could directly impact the Artemis timeline. And as we've seen, Boeing's challenges tend to inflate costs, sometimes exponentially. Although these specific hardware issues relate to Artemis 4, there's a real possibility that similar problems could affect Artemis 2, even though no official reports have confirmed it yet. The inefficiency doesn't stop there. NASA's Lunar Gateway Project is another area of concern. According to a Government Accountability Office report, this project could cost up to $5.3 billion by December of 2027. But what's more worrying, it's already showing significant delays. The current timeline may not allow the Gateway to be ready for Artemis 4 by its September 2028 target. Additionally, the Gateway's design has been flagged as incompatible with the Starship HLS, the spacecraft that will eventually ferry astronauts to the lunar surface. Furthermore, the processes involved in building and operating the system in tandem with Artemis missions are incredibly complex, adding more layers of difficulty to NASA's overall lunar goals. Of course, the SLS and Orion are still part of NASA's vision for lunar exploration, but with so many problems, it's difficult to imagine how NASA can maintain a well-organized and effective system. The same inefficiencies apply to other expensive NASA projects, like the mobile launchers, each costing around a billion dollars. After just one use for Artemis 1, NASA now has to spend a significant amount of time and resources to fix it. Meanwhile, the cost for the new launch system has reportedly ballooned to nearly $3 billion. Looking at the Artemis program as a whole, it's clear that many of NASA's systems are plagued with issues. They still exist today, mainly because NASA has been operating in the same way for decades. But with an urgent schedule to return to the moon, it's becoming increasingly hard to justify these inefficiencies. Should NASA consider canceling these systems altogether? Imagine a simpler approach, launching on SpaceX's Starship, landing directly on the moon with Starship, and returning aboard the same spacecraft. The only additional infrastructure we'd need is a refueling system in Earth's orbit. Without the need for the SLS, Orion, or the Lunar Gateway, the journey to the moon seems a lot more straightforward. Perhaps the time has come for NASA to make a bold decision. Orion, along with NASA's other aging systems, are obstacles to the overall mission. Ending them in favor of a simpler, more efficient path to the moon may be the solution many are waiting for. NASA's decision to use SpaceX's Dragon to assist Starliner last month may hint at a broader realization. Perhaps they are beginning to understand who they can truly rely on. Can NASA make another bold, game-changing decision in this case? Only time will tell, but the future of space exploration may depend on it. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.